of the heels are flexible and they're well pronounced. When I put my calipers on that foot, go to the center, just where the bars come in and meet, I go to the inside and spin it around, I have just slightly more to the outside. And that's my goal. Research shows us if you have as much or slightly more to the outside, you have a significant less chance of lameness. So I got that. And then I look at the quarter bends. Where are the quarter bends? Because if I'm going to add or subtract, I want to put, uh, put my modification to where the quarter bend starts. And this is slightly forward. It's up here just past the, looks like the third nail hole that I'm going to start increasing width of web back where that quarter bend starts turning in. That's where I'm going to do it. And if it starts at the toe, that's where I'm going to start adding some width of web. And there's a lot of ways to get the same mechanics, so don't get stuck on one way. There's all kinds of different things you can do to help them out. You could reduce this, and in doing that, it's going to increase this. So defining what type of environment the horse is going in and uh, how severe the, the deviation is is all important. These are very subtle, hard to see. So I'm going to do very subtle modifications to my shoes. I'm going to trim the best I can, get those bumps out. I started at the heels and moved forward. I brought the heels back first. And then uh, I'm going to try to enhance what I did with my trim with the modifications made to the shoe. So we'll check out this other one. And because of the rotational deviation, this heel is going to be somewhat compromised. And if I put my calipers on there again and go around, I have about the same amount on each side. And I'd like just slightly more. So I'm going to run the crease on this one slightly further forward. And also, my quarter bend is quite a ways up there. So I need to increase width of web here in order to change the posture slightly laterally and also help derotate. There's a pretty serious flex point right here in the toe. I like to see them more across here, and so that's telling me there's been a lot of stress from side to side in this foot. When we get the posture a little more accurate, a little further out, I feel that we can dissipate that stress fracture. So this is a DF, or this is a Kirkhart Meister shoe. They're punched slightly more coarse. The, the clips are quarter clips, not side clips. And uh, the, this is a 10 millimeter shoe. This is a working horse, working horse on asphalt. They're a very sturdy horse, heavy bone. They can handle a bit of weight. Just gonna run a crease in the outside here to increase width of web from the point where I saw that quarter start bending in back. I'm also going to slightly roll the toe to lateral toe quarter where the horse is breaking over. Set down the inside width of web so that there is no sole pressure. Put the clips in so that they blend nicely with the outside of the hoof wall. Up front, I didn't need quite so much. I'm going to go with the setting off the outside of that branch. Anything sticking out becomes leverage in a hurry on this foot. That will increase the width of web laterally. I'll clean up the check by pushing the shoe over at the toe, putting it there. Doing some crush strokes right here, and then bump that in slightly. I just cleaned up that check on the outside without reducing the width of weight. The horse is towed in, so I want to just slightly round up the outside corner where the horse is breaking over.
going to bring that branch in. I'm going to put my tom reins in the direction I want that material to go in. Find the arc on the end of the horn I want to go on and walk over the edge. My clips aren't completely set. You see I haven't burned it on the edges there. This one looks pretty good. I won't do anything with that. I can also tell a lot about my fit with the burn marks on the outside of this. My hot set tongue's gotten away at this quarter, so I'll fix that clip and come back and see if I can keep my hot set tongues out of the way. I hold it up and I look at the symmetry of it because I want to make sure that I don't have that medial toe flare built into my shoe. Just tighten that up slightly right there. It's easy to put that in there, especially if we're rockering toes or putting the break over point where the animal breaks over naturally. just a little extra over here. I have to be careful not to fit it too tight when I'm putting a pad on because that's going to take up some space. So I want to leave about an eighth inch more than I usually leave. Bringing that medial heel in, put it on the anvil, find the arc that I want, put the tongue reins in the direction I want to try the, uh, the heel to go in, and the point where I want it to start going in is right over the edge of the anvil there, and just gently walk it back and that will bring it around at the same arc as the anvil, the position you had the shoe in.
we're just putting heel traction in. And heel traction is the most important because you don't, when you're pulling a carriage or a wagon or something, you don't want that horse sliding forward, losing its balance and having the carriage or the load come over them. That's the most important part. If you don't have enough power to pull forward, then put another horse on it. But sliding downhill or having the carriage go over is the most tragic thing that can happen when you have a driving horse. So I have, I have some guidelines for defining how far back I'm going to put the brake over. And what I want to do is put my straight edge along the front of the pastern, just so I can see a little bit of air there. But it's just the pastern that you're following. You're following that, those joints. And uh, it's sticking out here. Watch what happens when Darren picks up the other limb. It, the fetlock dropped, and all of a sudden my brake over moved way out. So my brake over is way out here somewhere, the, the guideline that I use. So I don't really need to set that shoe back or I'm gonna create a, a disservice to the horse. If we put brake over way back, we take stress off of the deep digital flexor tendon, but we put it on the suspensory ligament and superficial flexor tendon. One other aspect that we have to take into consideration, thank you, Darren, is the direction of brake over. So a trick I have that I use, in my experience, very few horses brake over at the point of the frog. There's all kinds of rotations and twists. And if we're going to help this horse, to keep it from paddling quite as much as it did, we need to put the brake over where that horse breaks over. A lot of our manufactured shoes are rolled all the way around, and that's great for a horse that has severe flexural issues. This horse doesn't have flexural issues like that. And if we put brake over in all directions, a horse like this is more susceptible to collateral ligament damage because it's easier for them to twist their ankle, right, or pull those collateral ligaments. When I'm defining the point of brake over, I'll have that mark I put on the outside edge wherever I defined the distance forward that breakover should be. I'll put one end of my little level right on there, right on that mark, and then I will hold that with my thumb and then I'll let the foot go in the natural range of motion and just push till that bubble hits center right there. Now I'll put my other thumb on there, bring it up, and draw a line across. And if, if we look at this line and compare it to the wear in the old shoe, and we can see here that the wear in the old shoe is off to the corner here and going across like that, similar to the line that I set in that hoof now, right across there. So I rolled it with a hammer slightly, and I'll clean that up when I finish up the shoe with the grinder. So we define the brake over in the lateral toe quarter there. When I put the shoe on and get it in that position, and I have my roll from there to there, and I'm going to check that with my level. I have a little sighting right there. Put that in there, put that on the outside, put the foot in the natural range of motion, push that down to the bubble hits there. Now, when I want to put my traction in there, I want to move this back parallel. Keep that Tip this down, there we go. And so when I get that bubble in the middle, I want one piece of traction there and one piece further back. So it's parallel to the line of breakover. And that takes a lot of stress off of the heels as they land. And then I'll take it to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut the perimeter out and then I'll grind in for the clips. Once I have those pads fitted, then I'm going to go to the grinder on the other side. Then I'm going to clean up the edges. I want to leave this slightly full because she has a prominent frog. And we'll throw in a water bucket just to soften it for a minute so I can put it on there so we're not putting positive pressure on the frog. <laughs> Well, 
knock any dirt or debris out of there that's accumulated while well, the horse has been standing there. I'm going to use Rate Plus in the new caulking gun to apply that. And I want to have the, the tip right next to the hoof. And I can walk around there and spread that in without having it all over my fingers and everything else. And it's easier to get more accurate with the packing that you put in there. It doesn't need to be excessive. Excessive. The next thing I'm going to do is pop the shoe on there, pop it back in, and then let the horse stand down on it for a couple minutes and dissipate that over a greater area before continuing with the nailing process.